Hey, what's going on? It's your main man, Chef Jay Black. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Uh, this week on Use What You Got, we're doing viewer's choice, okay? So we took some items that some viewers had selected. Uh, we had pork chops, we had bacon, we had sausage, we had flour, we had eggs, we had milk, we had seasoning. And I decided to come up with a dish with it. So this week, we're doing brunch. All right, so once again, we're doing brunch. So we're bringing you the three little pigs. We have sauteed pork chops. We have sausage and gravy. We have bacon. None of which you can go wrong with. Okay, so we're going to be doing uh, sauteed pork chops over a herb biscuit, buttermilk biscuit. Uh, we're still going to line that with some uh, white sausage gravy. Turn around, we're going to saute some skillet potatoes, some bell peppers, some onions, some seasoning. Uh, this is going to hit you with a scrambled egg. Okay, so this is going to be a new, good, phenomenal breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner type deal. So make sure you guys check in with us. Once again, as always, leave your comments and the feedback. All right, so for your old fashioned buttermilk biscuits, one of the main things that you need is buttermilk. But it's not a problem if you don't have buttermilk. All you need is one cup of milk. One tablespoon of either lemon juice or white vinegar. So this is white vinegar. I'm just going to mix this up together. Okay. It's really simple to make buttermilk. So now we're going to let this sit for five to ten minutes. All right. So now it's time for us to go ahead and get our biscuits rolling. Okay, you can do your biscuits two different type of ways. You can use an AP flour, which is all purpose. You can use a bread flour, which that's what I'm using. Uh, I use the brand King Arthur. And because I want to get some of those flavors jumping, I'm going to add in some aromatics. And so I'm going to add in three tablespoons of oregano, dried oregano. Okay. And I just want to make sure that this is completely mixed up together. If you were just making the breakfast biscuit, then you would just stay with some of the, the general staples of buttermilk biscuits. But because this is going to be a dinner, I'm making this into a savory dish. I want to just add a, a little bit more ingredients to make this dish kick off a little bit. Okay, so now we have everything put together, right? Okay, so I'm using six tablespoons of butter. Okay, went ahead and cut those up. What you have at home, you may have an actual cutter, biscuit cutter. But if you don't, then you can definitely use a fart. Okay, so you just want to break the butter down. Using the fart, this flour is really, really soft, which is really good. It's one of the difference between the regular flour, but you just want to break the butter down, and then after you break it down, you're going to mix that in with your hand. And the reason why you're doing this instead of melting butter, because you want your biscuits to be flaky, and this butter, these little bitty pieces of butter that's going to be left over, is going to fit in those pockets when we make the dough. Okay, and that's going to make your, when that butter melts in the oven, it's going to make your biscuits really, 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 really fluffy. As well as we'll do some flipping and turning when we get the dough ready. But. All right. So now that we have that broken down, we want to just mix it in with your fingers. Okay. You just want them that butter to just be broken down so you still can break it down with your hands just a little bit more because that's going to really make this into a flaky biscuit to smell the garlic the onion even the oregano just by mixing it up the aroma starts to get in the air so that's really really good but as you can see these little bitty flakes of butter that look like chunks that's what you want inside of your biscuit okay you don't want that whole piece that we cut off in the beginning okay 
So this is really good. I think we can move forward. Work smells really good. Okay. Now I'm just going to mix this up. Okay. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to mix this up until it becomes the dough that we have been searching for. So I make sure that egg is broken up and yolk. And as you can see, it's starting to create its own form. Okay, so we're creating our dough. It smells so good. You guys have to add some herbs inside of it, especially if it's going to be a savory dish, not just a sweet breakfast dish. Okay, so you don't want to incorporate that too much because you don't want the biscuits to dry out, right? So you don't want that much flour on it. We're about to bring this out. Dust our workbench. Okay, so just spread that out just a little bit. Go ahead and get that dough out. It's perfect, perfect. Go ahead and just flip it over a couple times so I can get that flour incorporated in it. Okay. So now you see we have a dough. Okay. Smells good. So now I'm going to roll it out just a little bit. Add some of that flour. To my rolling pin so that it wouldn't stick okay you can already start to see the flakes inside of your biscuits which is a good thing okay so i don't want to roll it out that much because now i just want to kneel it in okay folding that in the more you fold you should do about six to ten folds that's going to create the layers of flakiness inside of your biscuit You can see those flavors. You see those little pockets of butter in here? Once that's inside of the oven, it starts to melt. That's what's going to help form the flakiness of your overall biscuit. Still have all of those pockets of butter, so that's going to be a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to roll this out. I am done with this. Make sure I have some flour on my roller so it doesn't stick. As you can see, you can see those aromatics inside of my actual dough, which is really good. But you all see those pockets of butter. Okay. That's what I want. That's what I need for that flakiness. Now, right here is where you would actually use your bread. You just want this to be like an inch thick. Okay. You would use your cutter. I am not going to use a cutter. Okay, I'm going to take this whole thing away and I'm going to put this inside of a pan. All right, so now it's time to bring in our baking because we are using 
bacon inside of our potatoes, but we're also going to be using the bacon fat to make our actual gravy for our uh, sausage and gravy. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. Always want to knock out the things that take the longest. All right, got our bacon in, fat, good fat, so this will render really good. All right, we'll be right back. Let's cook. Okay, so our bacon is ready. Um, so we're just gonna drain off that good bacon fat so that we can make our potatoes in it. And we're actually going to use the rest of this bacon. As you can see, we're gonna chop that up and that will go in our actual potatoes as well. Okay, so now we're here to make our sausage and gravy. Okay, so we have our pan heating up. Uh, you can see that a little bit. If you're using cast iron, I will give you a trick that you can do. You can actually put your cast iron skillets in the oven. It will help to go ahead and heat up your pan. So once you put it on the fire, you're ready to go. So I have about a pound of just regular sausage, fresh sausage. So I just want to saute that up a little bit. Now you want to break it down a little bit because once you're putting it on the plate, you don't want some big chunks of processes hitting your plate. But hey, we're doing, we have bacon, we have pork chops, we have sausage. Like this is, this is what you call brunch, okay? And we're just taking it up a whole nother level. You hear what the main man chef said? One third cup of flour, and we're just going to add that in, and then we're just going to mix that about. This is going to make a little small roux with the fat from the actual sausage. It should cover your sausage completely. Okay, that's totally fine. See how it's coming out right now. Okay, now I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. Okay, now. I have two cups of milk here, okay? I want to add half of that, so about one cup of milk, okay? And you're doing it, you're breaking it down so that it can get thicker, okay? But at the same time, you don't want any lumps, so this is the spoon that you should use, something where if you need to, you can still smooth out the lumps, okay? So we don't want any lumps in our gravy, okay? As you can see, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Okay, that's what roux does. So we're gonna add in the rest of our milk. And so we added two cups of milk, one third cup of flour, and then we're just gonna season this with salt and pepper to taste. I'm not gonna use a lot of seasoning um, because we, we, we have a lot of different seasonings coming in that's gonna help to intensify this whole dish, okay? So once it's thick enough, we'll taste this to see if we need a little bit more salt and pepper. Um, so just give it time to thicken up just a little bit. But the flavors are starting to mix in really well. Making this sausage gravy is not a hard thing. Okay, it just takes a little bit of patience. If you've ever made roux, then you know you can't rush the roux, okay? Let that be your number one rule. You can't rush the roux. And then you always want to continue to stir it because if you don't, then the roux will start to burn at the bottom of the pot. Okay? So we don't want this to start to burn at the bottom of my cast iron skillet, okay? But sticking it up really, really good. It looks good. I don't have any lumps. So that is the number one goal is to not to have any lumps because you don't want to bite into just a big lump of flour. That's that's not what you want to do. It's not it's not cool whatsoever. All right, so I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit as you can start to see my roux, my flour, my gravy starting to thicken up. Okay. 
All right, so that gravy is really, really thick. The good thing is, if it's too thick for you, you can always add just a little bit more milk, okay? So I wanna taste it to see what it tastes like. That sausage is really, really good. I wanna add a little bit more milk. bit more milk just to thin it out just a little bit okay so your your gravy is however you want to do it okay if you want a thick gravy leave it thick if you want to thin it out you can always just add in just a little bit more milk in there and just add it in slowly okay so you're not making it extremely wet okay or extremely soupy okay you just want the right consistency Okay, I know I do want to add in some more black pepper. Okay, because I want that flavor, but I also want more salt. Okay, I can tell from my dish that I wanted this flavor to really, really pop. So I'm going to add in a little bit more salt into that. Okay, and we should be good to go. I'm just going to mix that in emulsify all of those flavors together, okay? You want all of those flavors just to come together as one complete unit, okay? So our sausage gravy looks really, really good, okay? I wanna try it one more time before I pull it off. This time I'm gonna add a little meat in my dip. This is Good. Okay, so this dish is complete. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, so now for us, it's time for us to work on our breakfast potatoes. Okay, so I just want to cut my potatoes in half. Okay. I don't want any big pieces. Like I said, this is breakfast. So I'm just going to slice those up as so. Okay. I'm just going to put those to the side. I will cook those up in a few minutes. Keeping your fingers tucked in because you want to end this video and this dish with all of the fingers that you started with. So, we just want some nice good pieces, nice good chunks, something that we can really just one fart get these in our mouth and get them go to go. All right, so to so go with our potato dish. We have some bell peppers, okay? Just gonna slice those up. Just gonna dice them. Uh, not really looking for any juliennes, like I said before. Um, quick way to do this. Move this out the way. Take your knife and just simply just go all around the bell pepper, okay? Basically carving out the inside. You don't need this. This is trash. And so if you look in the inside, we have a complete clean inner layer of our um, bell pepper. So we have a yellow, orange, and a green one. Most people, like I said in another video, will try to cut on the waxy side. Can you do it? Yes. Okay. Is it necessary? No. Okay. If you cut on the inner flesh side of it, it'll cut a lot better. Okay. We don't need any julienne because these are going to be thick pieces that will be inside of our actual potatoes. So we just wanna make sure that they're bite-sized and we can taste those flavors. And it's also going to give you color. It's one of the main things you wanna do when you're doing the dish. You wanna make sure that you have some color inside of your dish. Uh, this go around, we were doing a fan favorite. 
which means that they were we were just simply selecting the meal based off of what someone in the comment section said that they had in their kitchen. Of course, in my kitchen, I have a lot more ingredients, so I didn't want to make the dishes unfair based on the subject. So just going to chop those up, get those good to go, and we're good. All right, so next we just have our onion. We don't need a whole onion. This is a red onion or purple onion, depending on how you say it. Okay, so I'll take off that excess layer because we don't need it, we don't want it. Okay, so I only need half, okay? half of the onion. The rest of it we can use for a whole nother dish, okay? This center part right here, we can grow a whole nother onion with it, okay? This center part, but I don't actually want to eat it. I don't want to bite into it, okay? So normally, I would just simply cut it out, pop it out, just like that. Just that simple, okay? Take that out, throw that in the trash, go ahead and finish cutting up your onions. So our onions are done. I'm gonna add our onions to our bell peppers and just give those a mix. Just so that they incorporate so when we get ready to saute them in the potatoes that we're not getting big chunks of one and not of the other. Okay. All right, so this is good. All right, here we are. We're about to start on our breakfast potatoes. The first thing we're gonna do, we're going to, as you can see, this heat is starting to show a little bit. Um, start to see the smoke coming up. We let our uh, bacon fat get warmed up so that we can start to add our potatoes in. We're gonna do these in batches. As you can see, that grease is nice and ready to go. So we did about two uh, ounces of um, Bacon fat, okay? We want to make sure we leave enough room inside of here so that we can actually toss our potatoes. And at the same time, we're going to need space when we start adding in our bell peppers, onions, and our seasonings, okay? So you want these potatoes to cook for about five minutes, okay? And then after they cook for about five minutes, then we'll add in our bell peppers, our onions, but then that's when I'll add in the seasoning, and then we'll let that cook for about another 10, 15 minutes, um, probably right at 14, 15 minutes, so that these potatoes can be nice and tender. All right, <clears throat> so our potatoes, we're cooking them on low because we don't want to cook them too fast. If you cook them too fast, you'll brown all of the outsides and all of the insides will be undercooked, okay? And that's not what we wanna do. But right now, we wanna add in some of our bell peppers and our onions, cause we need those to go ahead and cook and get tender, okay? So that they can add these good flavors to our dish, okay? Gonna let that cook for about another five, six minutes, okay? Let that cook in with the potatoes, and then I'm going to come through and I'm going to season the potatoes. So don't worry, I didn't forget about the season, but I just want to allow those vegetables and those potatoes to cook properly um, because we can season the food at any point. But if we don't cook it properly, then our dish is not complete either way, okay? So we'll just let that cook for a little bit. We'll turn the heat up just a little bit. Once again, don't want to overcook it. Don't want to cook it fast. You want to make sure that you're taking your time, that the flavors get a chance to infuse with each other. Potatoes, yellow bell peppers, orange bell peppers, green bell peppers, onions, 
okay? And then we're just going to hit it with some good seasoning. All right? Shemaine, man, Chef J. Black, checking in with you. All right, so here we are. We're, we've been cooking for a couple minutes. We're going to go ahead and add our oregano, okay? We have a teaspoon of oregano. We have a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. We have a teaspoon of cumin. We got a tablespoon of garlic powder. Got a teaspoon of paprika. Got a teaspoon of chili powder. And lastly, we have a teaspoon, a tablespoon, excuse me, of chipotle roasted garlic. Okay, I will show you on the chipotle garlic garlic what that is. Okay, I really love this seasoning. You guys get a chance, check it out. I want to make sure you see that at both sides. Okay, so we're going to just mix our seasonings into this wonderful dish. Okay, and we have probably about 10 more minutes on these potatoes because we want these potatoes to be nice and tender. Okay, once again, this is brunch at nighttime. Okay, so we want the flavors to not really resemble a breakfast meal. Turn my heat down just a little bit so we can really allow those potatoes to tenderize. And as you can see, start to see the flavor. So that's why I said don't worry about the seasonings. We're definitely going to get the seasonings in. We're going to make sure that they're incorporated in the dish. But I just want to have the potatoes, bell peppers, and the onions. I want to give them enough time to just sit there and tenderize. So there we have it. Our potatoes are done. The potatoes here. Okay. So these are our potatoes. These are our breakfast potatoes. All right, final dish, the pork chop, okay? We have some nice, good pork chops. We've already, I've already washed those off. So I'm going to season them up. You can see. Okay, on the seasoning, it's going to be really, really simple. Once again, if you have a lot of seasoning, a lot of flavors, a lot of aromatics, uh, and herbs inside of your dish already. You don't really have to pound on a lot of seasoning uh, for your dish. So I'm going to start off with some Cajun seasoning. I love Cajun, okay? You can buy Cajun whole or you can blend it yourself, okay? But once again, this is called use what you got, okay? So just depending on what you have in your household is what you're going to use, okay? Some salt. Hit that with some good salt. All right, I'm gonna top it off with some nice pork, uh, pepper, sorry. Um, make sure that those flavors are all the way around, they're in there. Okay, we're gonna flip them, because we need to season both sides. You want to go ahead and put your seasoning in a container that you can double dip. That way when you're done, you can just throw this seasoning away, because what you want, don't want to do is cross contaminate. You don't want to be reaching inside of your seasonings at home and then come back and touch raw meat because once again that's cross-contamination so that's the reason why you see people already have their uh, ingredients mise and plots out so that you can one work faster two you won't be cross-contamination you won't be doing cross-contamination okay our pork chops are good and ready we're about to put those in the skillet this dish is almost done ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in with chef jay black I feel it is hot, it's warm, it's ready to cook, my dear. I can't sing. Okay. 
I want this just to melt down. Okay. The other thing I want to add is time. Time is the one thing we don't always have. Um, but if you have it in the fuse freezer, refrigerator, I'm sorry, then add it to your dish. It will bring about a whole nother flavor to your pork chop. Okay? So now I'm going to turn it up. Put my butter is down. It's ready. I'm going to get two pork chops in here. All right. Line up that other one in here. So I'm going to let that cook on a little bit on each side. And then I'll come back and I'll base it with the butter uh, and with the thyme so that it's infusing. Right now the thyme will start to infuse the butter, which will bring about a whole different flavor to our dish. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are to my final step. This is going to be our scrambled egg and then we are completely done with this segment of use what you got. I just want to hit that with a little bit of butter, hit it with a little tad bit of oil, okay, just so my eggs can move around and play, okay. I don't know, some people do eggs a lot of different ways. Me, I have my five eggs. I add in a little bit of milk. Milk? Yes. Okay, about two ounces of milk. And what that milk is going to do is going to allow my eggs to get fluffy. Okay? Then I hit it with a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and then I'm just going to mix that up. Okay? So I like my eggs to be fluffy or scrambled. Once again, it's our brunch menu. Simply add those in. Make sure your yolk is broken. So I'll switch that up. It's going to be a lot easier. Turn my fire down a little bit. I don't need that brown in that early. Okay, we're just gonna scramble those up. All right, let's finish this dish up. Have some fresh parsley. Just wanna chop that up so we can garnish our, our whole brunch meal. So if you don't have fresh parsley, then the dry parsley will work. Fresh parsley is always better. But once again, this is used what you got. I just so happen to have this week some fresh parsley. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and plate our dish. We'll start off with our skillet potatoes. Okay, we got some bell peppers in there. We got some green ones. We got some orange ones. We got some yellow ones. And we finish it off with some crispy bacon. Okay, next we're going to add in just a little bit of scrambled eggs on each side of those. Just so we can... Add some more color to the page. We did add milk to make the eggs a little fluffier. Okay, so this is a brunch dish. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have all of our elements. Okay, really, really good. 
Then we're going to take our, oh my God, this herb biscuit, ladies and gentlemen, it came out really, really good. Okay, I'm going to set this on top of it. Open that up. Can you see the herbs? Can you see all those nice details, the butterness, the butter just melted so it's extremely flaky. So I want to spread this out just a little bit so that we can cover the bases of our pork chop. Next, we sauteed a, a pork chop and it came out extremely good. The fat rendered well. We're just gonna slightly lay that on top of it. Matter of fact, I just want that bone to be at the bottom so when we cut into it, then we're good to go on that. We're gonna finish it off with our sausage gravy. Who can have a biscuit without sausage gravy? Okay, so I want this to cover one, the biscuit, and then I want that to go across the pork chop, okay? So this is gonna be a phenomenal dish. Don't be selfish with yourself. You have to indulge, okay? So this is our brunch dish. I'm gonna top that off with just a little bit of green, greenery. So we have some chopped parsley. Okay? Our dish is done, okay? This is our breakfast meal. Use what you got. Doing things differently at home during this predicament. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm your main man, Chef Jay Black. Hey, what's going on? It's your man, Chef Jay Black. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. We did something a little different with Three Little Pigs today. Uh, as always, follow me on social media. Chef Jay Black on Instagram. Chef Knife Catering on Facebook. I hope you guys can take this home. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Eat it for yourself. Um, and next week, we're going to be doing the same thing. So please, in the comment section below, List what you have in your refrigerator, your cabinets, your deep freezer, and let's come up with a dish that we can kind of entertain our family with. Once again, always stay blessed. I'm humbled that you guys have joined me. Once again, stay safe, stay in, let's curve this together. I'm your main man, Chef Jay Black.